Hi all, this is the badging video for the sliding compound miter saw. Uh, it's also known as the chop saw, so that's why I'm going to call it for the rest of the video. The chop saw we use mostly for cross cutting. So when you have a wood with, with a normal grain, you're using it to cut across the grain. The nice thing about this chop saw is it slides, because it's a sliding compound miter saw, so you can cut more deeply than you can on most other things. There are times where you're not going to cut directly across the grain, but in general, that's what we're using it for. In terms of safety with this tool, you're gonna wanna wear eye protection as you always do in the wood shop. It's also pretty loud, so you're probably gonna wanna wear ear protection. If you have longer hair, uh, make sure to tie it back. We have hair ties over in the safety area. Um, and make sure not to have any loose wristwatches, necklaces, sleeves, stuff like that. Um, in the wood shop, usually it's a great idea to have short sleeves on. So that's sort of the, the general safety, and hopefully you're watching this video now in preparation to get badged. So you're gonna come in and get checked out and practice and ask any questions. Um, and that's indicated right down here on the uh, sliding miter requirements. So you're gonna be watching this video, and it's also a buddy tool, and that means there needs to be someone either in the shop or in the main area who knows that you're working, can hear you, and is in contact with you. So if there's a problem, they know uh, to be checking in on you periodically. There's also a QR code and a link for more information about this tool. So if you want to get a refresher or to, to get any more information, you can just scan that code. What's also located down here is the activation for the tool. So if you've been badged, um, which means watching the video and then getting checked out on the tool, your card will activate the tool. So right now, it doesn't work, but once you've been badged, you can take your card put by the scanner, it should beep, push the green button, and then it turns on. The green light means that it's activated. If you push the red button, it'll deactivate it, and you should do that once you're done using the tool. The big red button is for emergency stopping, and the only real difference there is that that stays pushed in. You have to turn it in the direction of the arrows to get it to reactivate. So normally you just use this button. Uh, be careful of whacking this button with your knee, and if, for some, if at some point you're pushing the green button and it's not turning on after you skin your card, it may be because you whacked that with your knee. So just be mindful of that. So back up here to the saw, we know why it's a sliding compound miter saw, because it slides. Um, what does compound miter mean? We'll, we'll address that now. So it miters in two directions, it, or miter, it, it makes angles in two directions. The first one is along this direction, and the way we do that is we push a little button right here with our thumb, and then you can turn the whole head. So that's useful for making angles in this direction. There are little detents that you can see along this angle gauge, so it'll click in at common angles, so 15, uh, 30, etc. cetera. Um, if you want a random angle, say I'm going for 35 degrees, which isn't super common, you line up the little arrow with 35 degrees, and then lock it down. So it'll hold it right at that angle. The second um, mitering function of this saw is back here, and it's going to rotate the head in this plane. The way we do that is you turn the knob back here. It's a little stiff, but you can turn it, um, and it's lefty-loosey, but from this back perspective, so it, it may feel a little backwards. And then you can turn the whole head this way. So that's pretty nifty. So the way you're going to let it turn this way, if you want to make it a uh, mitered angle to this side, is pull back the little yellow tab in the back. You probably can't see it from your perspective, but it's right back here. You pull it, and that lets you turn this way as well. And then when you come back, it'll just lock back into place. The reason for that is that so it always defaults right back to zero. So you don't need to work too hard to line it back up. You just make sure it's resting there. And then when you tighten it, um, it will it will be at, at zero degrees, which is nice. And it's important to make sure it's nice and tight when you're done so the head isn't wobbling around. It needs to be quite firm. So that's the compound miter part of the saw. Um, and as you're developing your woodworking skills, you'll get a sense of when and, and how you would, you would use those capabilities. Um, in terms of dust management, dust management, excuse me, with these tools, uh, they have a automatically turning on vacuum system. So when you pull the trigger, when the tool is activated, the vacuum turns on automatically and will collect most of the dust. However, it doesn't get everything, so when you're done, make sure to grab the vacuum that's right over to the side of the chop saw and vacuum up around, around your work. 
Um, so now I'm going to demonstrate using the saw and how to, how to use it safely. So I'm going to put the ear protection on. I'm going to take the, the, the piece of scrap wood and put it here. There are a few ways of holding it down safely. If, if there's enough distance, um, certainly outside of the yellow area, but preferably another few inches, then you can comfortably hold it with your hands. Something to bear in mind is that if you can't hold the piece safely because it's too awkward or weird angle or it's too small, then this is not the appropriate tool. It is uh, a powerful tool and it, the pieces need to be held very firmly and confidently uh, before you can bring the blade down. You want to stand out of the way of the blade. The, the blade is made up of little carbide teeth and if it were to hit metal, it's not impossible for a tooth to come off. Um, also, if uh, something else were to kick, you don't want to be in the way of the blade. So you hold with one hand, you reach over with your other, and your body stays out of the way. Um, and this is a similar stance to, to when you're using the table saw. Uh, the saw has, is pretty powerful, so when you pull the trigger, it's going to kick in your hands. So you need to be ready for that, so hold it with a firm, confident grip. Um, you're going to squeeze the trigger, there's, there's no additional safety. Pull down, and then pull up and let go. The reason for doing that is so that as the blade is slowing down, it isn't slowing down through your wood and scraping up the side. So as you can see, the tool timed out, the light turned off, so I'm just going to reactivate it. And the last thing I'm going to show you before we do the cut is the guide. So right underneath the blade, there's a shadow where the light isn't, and that's exactly where the blade is going to cut. So if you've had a mark, on your piece of wood, you could line that up on or to the left or to the right of your mark so that you knew exactly where it was going to cut. It's important to bear in mind that the blade has some width, so if you have a four, feet, four foot piece of wood, you're not going to end up with four single, with four one foot pieces because you're going to lose a little bit of wood each time. So it's important to bear that in mind in terms of where you want to make your cuts. So I'm holding the piece, um, my body's to the side, and uh, and now I, I feel that I'm, I'm ready to, to cut the wood. So I'm going to pull the trigger. Let go. So that was one holding technique. Um, another is to use this clamp system. So if it was small or awkward or big or for some reason was, was hard to hold on to, you could use this clamp. The way it works is it just flips up and over. You put it on your work, clamp it down, and then tighten this piece. If you wanted to move it to the other side, then you would loosen it, bring it backwards, lift it up, and put it in the hole on, on the opposite side of the tool. So that's a, a great feature for the place. Um, and that wraps up the badging for the sliding compound miter saw. As with any of the other tools, if you have any questions, just ask them on Slack, one of the animators, um, in person. Um, and, and make sure not to do anything that you're uncomfortable with. And when you're done, just make sure to turn the tool off and vacuum up when you're, when you're all set.